to the group exhibit hydrogen fuel cells and batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We are here at the technical forum and my name is Muriel Buakas. The upcoming presentation will be regarding hydrogen on demand solution based on power pace technology and please give a warm welcome to the speaker. He is a project manager of hydrolysis of the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Technology and Advanced Materials. Please welcome on stage Dr. Markus Tegel. So, thank you very much for that kind introduction. And thank you for visiting my presentation about hydrogen on demand solutions based on power based technology. And I want to talk about recent advances in this technology. Um, I've been giving a talk last year, and I want to show you especially what's new this year. Basically, what is power based technology? It's a way to safely store hydrogen without the need for hydrogen infrastructure like fuel stations, without compressors, and of course, without high pressure tanks. It is a form, it is a semi liquid um, in which the hydrogen is contained, and we have also been featured in um, the Inventors magazine Einfach Genial in MDR and won the 2013 EFSEL award with this technology. So where can power paste be employed? Basically, everywhere where batteries can be employed, um, but when capacity, durability, self-discharge, or weight and size, or the grid dependence of batteries is a problem, or temperature range, or the recharging times, and even uh, the uh, uh, capex costs per kilowatt hour which needs to be installed, batteries might not be the optimal solution. So generally, power paste can be employed everywhere where hydrogen, the use of hydrogen is sensible, but the hydrogen infrastructure um, is a real problem. What are the advantages of uh, power paste in comparison to other technologies? Firstly, you have extremely high energy densities in power paste. These are the electrical energy densities of uh, power paste, both by weight and by volume, in comparison to lithium ion batteries and methanol and gasoline when producing electricity. And these figures include all conversion losses. So power paste has 10 times the energy density um, of lithium ion batteries, for example. Further advantages of power paste include you're completely independent from the electricity grid, so no need to recharge. You have no self discharge, it's stable for um, about five years or even more power paste. You don't have any emission uh, and zero noise, so no carbon dioxide, uh, no toxic fumes, for example. You have high power output, a lightweight material. You can quickly refill within minutes, just insert a new cartridge of power paste. Um, you are orientation independent, which is especially a problem for liquid solutions where you don't have orientation independence. You have a non-toxic material, which is also safely, uh, which can be safely handled. And which is very important for certain applications, the total cost of ownership can be much lower with power paste in comparison with other technologies. So in our opinion, uh, this, all of this makes power paste especially advantages for uh, two uh, things. Firstly, stationary systems uh, like backup power systems, security systems, uh, or also surveillance systems. Basically, everywhere where high system availability is needed, grid independence, and of course, low operational costs. But also, 
on the perspective at least, portable and smaller mobile applications where you need especially high energy densities and the ease, ease of use of uh, these materials as well as um, the completely emission-free um, conversion to electricity. What is, chemically speaking, the principle behind power paste? It's relatively easy to understand. The magnesium hydride in the material reacts with water to form hydrogen. And the trick is, half of the hydrogen actually comes from the water and the other half from the magnesium hydride. So it doubles your uh, hydrogen capacity of the magnesium hydride. And it's a real hydrogen on-demand solution, as I will show you, as you can dose both compounds. And how do you convert this um, material to electricity? You do it in a hydrogen generator. Here you can see a prototype of such a hydrogen generator. And it has two main components. Firstly, you have a, just a normal linear actuator uh, where you squeeze out the power paste. And you have a small water pump which doses the water. And then, of course, you need some microcontroller sensors uh, and controls to provide uh, the control of the reaction and also some intelligence. In this video, in this short clip, I want to show you the effectiveness um, of dosing both compounds, not only water or uh, the paste, but actually both compounds are dosed. And what you will be able to see is you can very evenly produce hydrogen with a um, very uh, defined volume per time. Here you can see a reaction setup where power paste is uh, running down a slide and also water is dosed and here you can see the reaction zone of both compounds and um, in this reaction zone, hydrogen is formed, and it's a very defined hydrogen output. In this case, I think of roughly um, 160 watts chemically, so that's about one liter per minute, or after conversion to electricity, that would be 80 watts electrically. And this, of course, works for uh, all powers you need. You actually produce as much hydrogen as is needed by the fuel cell. What are the secrets behind power paste? Maybe some of you haven't heard about power paste before. And one of the secrets is in the past, it, the reaction between magnesium hydride and water was just too slow. If you look at this curve, it shows the reaction between magnesium hydride, which is commercially available, and water. And here you can see the reaction progress. And normal magnesium hydride just doesn't react with water. We were able to, uh, with some additives, and then by forming power paste to highly increase the dy dynamics of this reaction. And that's the reason why it's now available for these hydrogen on-demand solutions. What you can see here is um, regarding the water, you can actually employ any kind of water. So it doesn't have to be um, deionized water. You can also use uh, waters from lakes, even seawater. All of this um, won us uh, in back in 2013 the EFSEL award, the first place. We also filed several patents meanwhile, um, and we have a very recent publication about this topic. I want to show you a couple of further uh, secrets about power paste, I call them. Uh, so the first secret I said to you, well, power paste is mainly or uh, mostly self-discharge free. And what you can see here is freshly prepared power paste, the infrared spectrum. It's a way of chemically analyze the, uh, the composition of a chemical material. Um, and the aged power paste after 18 months. And what you can see basically are the same features everywhere, which means the material re remains chemically completely unchanged. And we also analyzed with the infrared spectroscopy um, the hydrogen which is produced by a power paste if there are any impur impurities in the hydrogen. And the only real impurities are here, impurities, 
that's water vapor, which uh, is logical as you dose those compounds. But for PEM fuel cells, for example, that's actually quite good because you have moist hydrogen instead of dry hydrogen. Apart from that, the hydrogen has a very high purity. So how does a hydrolysis setup uh, power generator then look like? As I said, you have some component to dose the power paste, a water pump, the hydrogen generator is a simple re reaction vessel, then you have a fuel cell and a backup battery and some electronics. That's it. With all of this, you can power any kind of electrical load. Here I want to show you it's really as simple as that. Apart from uh, the components I've shown you, it's mainly simply a, a cartridge holder, a small plastic water tank. So basically what I want to tell you, it's only simple and inexpensive uh, components which are used um, to build these hydrolysis-based power generators. And in this uh, demonstrator, we also show you at our booth at E51 over there, um, it's a 100 watt uh, power generator, basically lim limited by the 100 watt fuel cell. Um, it provides around um, 600 watt hours uh, per cartridge. It's a 0.3 liter cartridge. The total system has a weight of 14 kilograms and um, 34 liters, which is half of the size and half of the weight um, in comparison to last year's demonstrator. It operates at very low pressures of 0.1 to 0.8 bars and uh, has an output voltage between, uh, from 16 to 30 volt um, uh, DC. The interface has been greatly simplified. It's really one button start and one button stop, so the reaction can be stopped in seconds, actually. And with these values, we have already a quite similar footprint uh, as comparable 100 watt DMFC or reformer based um, systems, but we still have plenty of room for optimization. So it can be built, of course, much more lightweight and smaller if necessary, for example, for mobile applications. I also want to show you the first test results of our TL5 demonstrator. Um, so here you can see uh, the whole system running at 70 watts. And of course, we also tested, for example, different load profiles here up to 75 watts in this case. As we finished our TIL5 uh, prototype only very recently, I can, can't uh, tell you about uh, long-term experience with this demonstrator because we really finished it um, one month ago. But w with our old demonstrator, it has been running for uh, about a year now, and it, this was really reliable. So it really should be a reliable uh, technology. We Not only at last year's Hanover Fair, we um, uh, it was running, it was uh, actually running at several industry fairs. I also want to show you um, the development, how fast is w it was, and um, it, sh it should show you um, how fast uh, development in, in the future is actually possible. Uh, 2014, we just were showing the proof of principle. It was just a very, very tiny. Uh, I'll call it toy fuel cell, uh, which was fueled by power paste. Last year, we had uh, the first lab demonstrator, which was successfully running at uh, technology readiness level four. This year, it's a demonstrator for the relevant environment already, so TRL5. And in the future, we are looking for partners to com commercialize the whole technology. We've been talking to a couple of companies and also institutes who are absolutely blown away by this technology um, and want to commercialize it with us. But um, we still need part partners, especially OEMs, um, who can produce, for example, larger numbers of systems like this and want uh, to provide their expertise to com commercialize, commercialize it, um, to, for example, for backup power systems. So if you're interested um, in working with us, don't hesitate to contact us at booth E51. Um, we are looking forward. And if you have any questions now, I would be more than happy to answer them. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As I already asked, any questions from the audience right now? Not at the moment. Um, my question would have been exactly um, about the commercialization. So yes. you are looking for partners right Ex now to, exactly. to start that. What's the goal in 2017 or you, you expect it? I think uh, three years from now is really realistic um, okay. for a market ready product if we have the right partners. And yeah. I'm still looking, it's still early this year's Hanover Fair, um, so we still hope um, to find especially OEMs, uh, but also uh, companies who want to employ our technology. Yes, because I, when I've listened, uh, PowerPay sounds like a great invention. It or, is. So um, I'm looking forward to hear more of um, PowerPay in a few months, years. Thank you very much for your time. Warm applause for you. Thank you. Okay, there is. Nur eine Frage. Das Magnesium H2 Magnesiumhydroxid ist das eigentlich ein keramischer Rohstoff, der gefunden wird irgendwo als als Plastifizierer oder um das danach die Tabletten zu pressen. Ich bin ein bisschen spät gekommen, aber die Presse gerade gesehen, um praktisch in der Tablette den Wasserstoff zu speichern. Ist das richtig? Also ich gebe mal die Antwort auf Deutsch, weil die Frage auf Deutsch war. Das Magnesiumhydrid ist tatsächlich keramisch oder salzartig, würde man eher sagen. Es wird hergestellt aus Magnesium, aus metallischem Magnesium mit Wasserstoff. Wir machen keine Tabletten daraus, sondern wir machen eine Paste daraus, die eben entsprechend dosiert werden kann. Und dieses Magnesiumhydrid, das kann wirklich je nach Bedarf produziert werden. Ab so zehn Jahrestonnen wird das interessant für Produzenten. Das ist nicht wirklich viel zehn Jahrestonnen. Also das kann man ohne weiteres in dieser Größenordnung auch wirtschaftlich bereits produzieren. Good, great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One more time. Okay, um, the next presentation will start in about five minutes and it will be held by Next Energy regarding the topic design to service of micro CHP systems. Please stay with us. Uh, if you need some more refreshments, some coffees, we have there a small bar. Help yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs>